Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to explain what's meant by a limiting reactant. You should then be able to explain the effect of a limiting reactant on the amount of products in a reaction, and this topic is higher tier only. We're going to start by taking a look at a relatively simple chemical equation that we've seen before. This is a balanced chemical equation. Magnesium plus chlorine produces magnesium chloride. Now remember that we do not write the number 1 in front of any chemical, so this equation tells us that 1 mole of magnesium reacts with 1 mole of chlorine to form 1 mole of magnesium chloride. Remember that in chemical reactions the starting materials are called the reactants, so in this reaction the reactants are the magnesium and the chlorine. What we make is called the product, so in this reaction the product is the magnesium chloride. Now if we used exactly one mole of magnesium and exactly one mole of chlorine, then at the end of the reaction we'd make exactly one mole of magnesium chloride and we'd have no reactants left over. However, in most chemical reactions it's just not practical or convenient to measure your reactants as carefully as this, so we normally use more of one reactant than the other. For example, in the reaction here we might use 0.5 moles of magnesium but one mole of chlorine. We do this to make sure that all of the magnesium fully reacts. We call the reactant that's fully used up the limiting reactant, and in this case that's the magnesium. The reactant that's not used up is called the excess reactant, and that's the chlorine. So let's see what would happen in this reaction. As the reaction proceeds, the magnesium would all get used up. We would use up 0.5 moles of the chlorine, and we'd make 0.5 moles of magnesium chloride. Now in the exam you could be asked to predict the outcome of a reaction taking into account which reactant is in excess and which is limiting. Let's look at a typical question. How many moles of zinc iodide would be produced if we used 0.5 moles of zinc and 1 mole of iodine? Calculate the mass of product. Looking at the chemical equation we can see that 1 mole of zinc reacts with 1 mole of iodine to make 1 mole of zinc iodide. We've been given 0.5 moles of zinc, which makes that the limiting reactant. That means that we must make 0.5 moles of zinc iodide. In this reaction, the amount of iodine has no effect on the amount of product because the iodine's in excess. There'll be some iodine left over at the end of the reaction. The question also asks us to calculate the mass of product. To do this, we use the equation mass equals number of moles multiplied by relative formula mass. The relative formula mass of zinc iodide is 319. Multiplying 0.5 by 319 gives us a final mass of 159.5 grams. Here's a question for you to try. How many moles of sodium chloride will be produced if we used 1 mole of sodium hydroxide and 0.25 moles of hydrochloric acid? Calculate the mass of sodium chloride produced. Pause the video now and try this yourself. Looking at the equation we can see that 1 mole of sodium hydroxide reacts with 1 mole of hydrochloric acid to make 1 mole of sodium chloride. Because we're only using 0.25 moles of hydrochloric acid, this makes the hydrochloric acid the limiting reactant. This means that we can make 0.25 moles of the sodium chloride. To work out the mass we multiply the number of moles by the relative formula mass, so that's 0.25 multiplied by 58.5 giving us a final mass of 14.6 grams to one decimal place. Okay, here's one more question for you. How many moles of copper will be produced if we use 0.5 moles of copper sulfate and one mole of magnesium? Calculate the mass of copper produced. Pause the video again and try this yourself. The equation tells us that one mole of copper sulfate reacts with one mole of magnesium to make one mole of copper. We have 0.5 moles of copper sulfate, which means that we can make 0.5 moles of copper. To find the mass, we multiply the number of moles of copper by the relative atomic mass. So that's 0.5 multiplied by 63.5, which gives us a final mass of 31.75 grams. Remember that you'll find plenty more questions on calculations involving limiting reactants in my revision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to explain what's meant by a limiting reactant. You should then be able to explain the effect of a limiting reactant on the amount of products in a reaction. 